Greetings adventures, this is Lorne, your guild advisor, and the first episode of Damaji Season 4 has finally aired, and so begins my weekly videos which highlight the differences between the light novels and the anime adaption. Rather than the long on-camera episode discussions I've done for past seasons, these will be shorter scripted videos which also provide more context for what you see on the show every week. Basically, I'll point out what you may have missed due to the cuts made for the anime adaption. Anyway, let's start the breakdown for the Season 4 premiere. The episode starts off with Hestia updating Belle's status to level 4 in an emotional scene that showcases Belle's journey as an adventurer, in a similar way to how Volume 12 begins. Something to note is that in terms of the actual story, it's only been about 4 months since Belle came to Orario, and just within that time frame, Belle became an adventurer and is already level 4. Just for reference on how difficult it is to level up, the previous record to get from level 1 to 2 was 1 year. Hisliara's Freze skill is pretty crazy. Still, even though this skill has accelerated his growth, he still had to accomplish some pretty amazing feats and come out alive to get to where he is. The Minotaur fight, the war game against Apollo Familia, and his battle against Asterios, everything that led to a level up did not come easy. Speaking of skills, the anime skipped out on this, but Bell did acquire the Oxlayer skill during his level increase. It enhances his abilities when fighting Minotaur-type enemies. Pretty on brand for our boy. Also, Asterios has officially been recognized as a level 7 monster by the guild, so Bell has quite a ways to go if he wants to face off against his rival. Remember that Asterios was severely weakened by the time they fought each other in Season 3. In addition to Ox Slayer, Bell now has the Escape Development ability, which basically increases his speed when doing evasive maneuvers. With all the running he's had to do in the series, it's no surprise he developed the ability. Hestia mentions to Bell that she has another name, Vesta, meaning Sacred Flame. To those of you well versed in mythology, you'll know that Vesta is the Roman name equivalent for the Greek goddess Hestia. Some of you may even recognize the Vesta name from the Damachi mobile game event, Otis Vesta, where you can see Hestia in her Vesta form. This event is from the 4th anniversary of the game and is actually written by the author of the light novels, Fujino Omori. Do note that the event is not canon to the series, but it's still a fun story overall if it piques your interest. The anime then brings us to a scene with Belle on the city walls talking to Fells, but there was actually a meeting that took place beforehand. In the novels, Belle encountered Hermes, who arrived alongside Osfi to apologize for his actions during the Xenos arc. In the ending montage to Season 3, you can see Hermes approach the Hestia Familia Manor, only to be dropkicked by Hestia, which she actually does do in the novels, but there's no formal apology to Belle in the show. Hermes states that he'll continue to meddle in Belle's affairs because he's a big fan. Hermes did what he did to restore Belle's reputation after it was damaged from fighting off adventurers in order to keep them away from Wiene. However, Hermes does not explain his reasoning to Belle, making no attempt to get sympathy. In the end, Belle states that he can't forgive Hermes for what he did, but Osfi does ask Belle to at least not hate Hermes for his actions. Fels gives Belle a new goal, to clear the deepest floor of the dungeon in order for the Xenos to have a future with humankind. Fels isn't able to fully explain what is on the bottom floor, likely due to the gods' overall secrecy of the dungeon itself. Whenever the deities are asked about what the dungeon is, they tend to hide that knowledge, agreeing that humankind should discover it for themselves. In terms of the endgame for the story of Damachi, we now have at least three things that need to be addressed before the series can end. The eventual defeat of the Black Dragon, Bell's rematch against Asterios, and now, clearing the bottom floor of the dungeon. Speaking as a light novel reader, yeah, we're not close to any of those yet. After meeting with Fels, the novel mentions a meeting of the gods known as Denitus, which is skipped in the anime. The last Denitus actually happened during Season 1. During this meeting, adventurers who level up are given new titles. Welf, who became level 2 in Season 2, receives the name Ignis the Everburning, which is a reference to his confession to Hephaestus. The gods came up with this title to tease Hephaestus who was carelessly bragging about Welf's confession. Shigisa, who became level 2 after the Haruhime arc, is given the title of Lovebird. Also during the Denitus, Freya declares herself a fan of Belle to Hestia's annoyance and Belle is given a new title, Rabbitfoot. 
skipping the Denitus is a bit ironic because of how the anime introduces the characters of Dormal and Lubis, who I mentioned previously in my Before You Watch Season 4 video. The dwarf and elf still recognize Belle as the little rookie, which makes me wonder when the anime will acknowledge Belle's new title. I actually think introducing this pair of characters now works pretty well because after their initial introduction which was skipped during Season 2, they aren't really relevant until this arc anyway. After Aina gives Bell the mission from the guild, he originally meets Hestia and Hephaestus at a cafe where Hephaestus explains the basics of an expedition. This discussion is skipped in favor of combining the explanation of expeditions with a meeting between Hestia and Familia. One thing I do find odd in the anime is that both Haruhime and Mikoto are strangely missing from this meeting and are off on their own. It's one thing for a large Familia to have a meeting between the officers who can then relay the information to lower ranking members, but Hestia Familia is a Familia of just 5 members plus Hestia. In the novels, Haruhime mentions that she has experience being in Ishtar Familia expeditions, while Welf shares that even though Physis Familia is not required to do expeditions, due to being a smithing Familia, his former Familia captain, Subiki, would often join expedition parties like he might have seen in Serto Rotoria. Another casualty of not including Haruhime and Mikito in the meeting is losing wholesome moments like Bell saying lines such as, If possible, I want to become stronger with all of you. And, I want to move forward as a Familia. After Bell's words, the Familia bonds together with words of camaraderie. The meeting between Lily, Daphne, and Cassandra originally takes place in the Hestia Familia manor rather than the Miak Familia home, but other than that, the meeting is adapted rather well. It's nice to see Daphne start to tutor Lily as she embraces the role of a strategist. For some additional context in the training scene with Take, Mikito, and Jigasa, the white bladed weapon you see Take unsheathe is actually the twin sword of a blade he gifted to Mikito during a skipped portion of Volume 8 I mentioned in a Cuts and Changes video. A promise was made between the two of them in which he would gift their Tenka, the White Sword, after Mikito returns to his Familia when her one-year tenure with Hestia Familia is over. I'm a big fan of the scene with Oka visiting Welf and asking for a weapon, as it was pretty much perfectly adapted. Welf giving Oka the sass is hilarious. The grim roar that Aisha gives Haruhime to learn new magic was actually taken from the Hermes Familia storeroom. It seemed a bit strange that the anime omits this detail because in Season 1, we learned that Grim Roars are incredibly rare and expensive when Belle uses one to learn Firebolt. It's amusing how little regard Aisha has for Hermes Familia property, but something tells me Hermes would let it slide, knowing the Grim Roar would end up helping Belle. While Belle is studying the floors of the dungeon with Aina, you can visibly see that Aina is clearly smitten with Belle. It's probably easy for the viewer to understand that Aina is attracted to Belle, but there are a couple of Aina scenes that have been skipped in past seasons which help build the progression of Aina's growing feelings. There is the whole side story from Volume 8 where Belle acts as her bodyguard, and also an extended scene after Belle loses to Asterios I mentioned in the Before You Watch Season 4 video where Aina comforts Belle. I think having these moments in mind helped the viewer believe that the development of Aina's affections is legitimate. The meeting between Hephaestus, Take, Miak, and Hestia plays out similarly in the novels, though the anime might have dialed up Hestia's energy during her bell focus rant up to 11,000. Overall, it's nice to see the deities look at their familiar's efforts with pride. The premonition that Cassandra has in the anime is more on the nose than in the novels, but I think it works in the anime's favor, so the viewer takes more notice of it. We also see Bell get his new weapon, Hakugen, from Wealth. If you watch my Before You Watch Season 4 video, you'll know where Welf got the Unicorn Horn, which is a very rare material. Just like the novels, the anime skips straight to Floor 24 as the party fights against the Hornets. Admittedly, the situation was a bit more suspenseful in the novels as the party was starting to get overwhelmed by the amount of Hornets. The Hornet's Nest was also a factor because it can actually spit out a fluid that is capable of immobilizing adventurers. Even so, the anime did a good job showcasing the teamwork of the party and how Belle has improved in terms of both speed and power. Just look at that Argonaut Charge Firebolt. The mix of blue and the fire is simply beautiful. Then the episode ends with a tease of what's to come. The first episode was more of a setup for the entire arc and I think it accomplished most of what it needed to do, albeit a couple of odd decisions here and there. It was always my assumption that the anime would try to get into the dungeon by the end of episode 1 and they did exactly that. 
That also means from here on out, it's going to be non-stop tension and action, so buckle up and enjoy the ride. For those of you who aren't aware, there are also Damachi Season 4 side stories that are being released weekly alongside the anime in the Damachi mobile game, Memoria Freze. This has been done for previous seasons, and sometimes these side stories will include some additional context for scenes in the show, or in rare cases, actually include skip content from the light novels. This week's side story features the members of Hestia Familia, excluding Belle, discussing Belle's recent level increase to 4. Here, they actually do discuss the Oxlayer's skill that was omitted in the anime. If you don't have the mobile game downloaded and still want to view the side story, I will be uploading these side stories on a different channel which I will link in the description. In addition to this new weekly scripted video format, I am considering more casual discussion style videos about my opinions on the anime adaption overall every time the anime finishes adapting a whole light novel volume. So you may see a volume 12 anime adaption review discussion whenever we conclude the volume 12 material in a few episodes. I apologize if I can't get these videos done right after the episode premieres. In previous seasons, the episodes released on Friday, and it was easy to just stay up late and work on the videos as time bled into the weekend. But with Thursday releases and my new scripted content approach, it's hard to get everything done in one night, knowing I have to work the next day. So please be patient with me if it takes an extra day or two to get these videos out. And with that, I'll see you all for next week's video. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more Don Machi content and follow me on my socials. This is Lorne, your Guilt Advisor, signing out.